Okay, uh, we can move to the agenda. Maria, please. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's take a glance at our agenda for today's session. We will start with an introduction to our activity and DP project, followed by an overview of the European Parliament. Then we will move out and we will move into breakout room sessions where we'll explore analyzing members of the European Parliament's commitment to entrepreneurship. And finally, we will return in the main room to share our findings and evaluation of the members selected by each group. Um, okay. Uh, this workshop uh, focuses on analyzing members of the European Parliament's commitment to entrepreneurship particularly regarding challenges faced by young entrepreneurs. Participants uh, will divide it into groups and task with selecting three members known for their dedication to addressing these challenges. Um, in the breaking room, breakout rooms, uh, groups will discuss, analyze aspects of the selected um, members like voting partners, review members voting records on entrepreneurship related le legislation, also their initiatives, and also the statement like examining public statement and speeches from these members regarding these matters. So the goal uh, of this workshop is to gain insight into each uh, member of the European Parliament approach to these matters and their efforts to support young entrepreneurs in Europe. About uh, the EP project, uh, this activity is part of our EP project, Your Board, Your EU, which aims to engage uh, young Europeans in democratic participation and encourage the involvement in the 2024 European Parliament elections by emphasizing democratic values and the importance of voting, particularly among young. Uh, the project is to empower them to understand and evaluate evaluate the EU policies with a focus on entrepreneurships as means of empowerment and socioeconomic development. The objective of this project is to empower youth uh, to critically engage with EU policies, focusing on entrepreneurship as tool of empowerment. Uh, its focus is to mobilize youth participation in the 2024 European Parliament elections and promote understanding of EU democratic values. Its actions uh, is to engage young leaders and youth organizations to promote uh, entrepreneurship and democratic participation. And the strategy of this project is to leverage uh, entrepreneurship to inspire youth engagements in democratic processes and encourage them to vote in the 2024 parliament elections. So uh, now I will hand over the floor to my colleague, Teresa, who will provide a brief explanation of the European Parliament. So Teresa, the floor is, is yours. Thank you very much, Tainev, and a big hi to all the familiar faces here and the new ones. It's a pleasure seeing all of you. So uh, as Tainev was mentioning, this is a project uh, that the core of it is the European Parliament. We are going to have very soon elections. So really, this is the moment to, you know, to really deep, uh, go deeper into what the Parliament is about. And as you can see in this slide, the European Parliament is the only EU institution that is directly elected by us. European citizens, because we really want to ensure the legitimacy of the European laws, the European values. So elections take place every five years and uh, members of the European Parliament, uh, the MPs, uh, they are elected. So uh, several times, and this is something that it's important that we are familiar with, uh, in more or less Brussels, Brussels uh, technical language, we use the expression MEP, MPs. So uh, we will mention this several times. So letting you know that every time that you see this uh, short uh, word, this refers to the members of the European Parliament policymakers. So Maria, you can move uh, to the next slide, please. Okay, so what are the co core functions of the European Parliament? Mostly four uh, main functions, main, you know, uh, main ways that the European Parliament is working for us, uh, European citizens. First of all, legislation. Uh, alongside with the Council of the European Union, uh, the Parliament shares the power to legislate, so creating regulations and policies. Second function is the budgetary oversight, how we are using and investing our European Common European Budget. So the European has the authority to approve amend and also reject the overall European Union budget. 
Third, an extremely important function, supervision and democratic representation. In other words, the European Parliament monitors the functioning of the European institutions and also approves or rejects the appointment of the European commissioners. So this is a very important thing. It has a very strong power in this sense. And finally, external dim dimension. So it's not only about the European Union as a whole. The Parliament has a mandate that goes beyond and it connects with the external function, the external image, uh, international relations of the European Parliament. We will see very shortly how this, uh, this, is, this takes place. Uh, Maria, please, can you move to the next? Lovely. Okay, so 705 members of the European Parliament. This is, this is really a lot. Uh, in this image, you can see this is the most updated one, and we highly recommend you to check time to time the European Parliamentary Research Service, where you can really find a lot of updated and accurate information about the composition, roles and functions. So here we have uh, the actual representation of the current European Parliament, which is about to, you know, to change in a, in a few, in a couple of months. Uh, okay, I have a quick question, if you can answer me. When are the elections taking place? The specific dates. Can you tell me? In June? Between 7th and 9th June, if I'm not mistaken. Six and six and nine. Yes, de depending on the on the member states. But uh, also keep in mind that some of us uh, we, we are living abroad of our member countries. So I would highly recommend you guys to check time to time the Parliament uh, Elections Parliament uh, EU website. Okay, I, I will share it with you. Where there are they have also the specific dates of uh, where we are when we are supposed to vote depending on the member state we are from. But uh, if you are based in your home countries, uh, six between the six and nine of June. Okay, so very quickly, so who are these 705 members of the European Parliament at the moment? So they represent 448 millions of citizens across 27 member states. And, and, and uh, following the next European elections, the number will increase to 720. So uh, this, are, this is going to be a key moment in you know, the political uh, representation and momentum of us Europeans. Okay, how are uh, the, member, the member of the European Parliament elected? By direct suffrage. So they are directly elected, as I mentioned at the beginning, the only European institution. Okay, so uh, I think maybe, maybe Maria, can you go to, uh, to the previous? Um, yes, excellent. Thank you very much, Maria. Okay, so what exactly do the members of the European Parliament, because many times we wonder, okay, so what is their specific role? Many, many functions, but I, I will try to summarize. Mostly, they debate on legislative proposals, on the legislative process, and as connecting with the core functions of the Parliament, they amend the budget and also uh, engage in the controlling, in the oversight of the European institutions. And as you can see here, there are different colors, there are different names. And any idea what this refers to, this EPP, uh, s and any, any, any assumption? What is this about, with these numbers? Any idea, guys? Okay. These are the political families. So uh, these 705 members of the European Parliament, they are uh, organized because this has to be highly organized in the different political families, the different political groups. So uh, I'm going to share right now because I think this is really important for you to know uh, in the chat. So all of you have access to these different seven political families. And these families have different uh, interpretations, different ideologies, and depending on the, you know, the different MPs coming from the different member states, they engage in these different political families. So at the moment, they are seven pan-European political groups. Okay, so I really uh, encourage you because we don't have the time at the moment, but checking the websites of each of the political groups because, you know, it's, I think it's very insightful to get to know what are the different political stance and, you know, how they, you know, define their connection with the different uh, core topics that are discussed and legislated at the moment at the European Parliament and in the last four, five years. Okay, so we can move to the next slide, Maria. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so this is a, a huge summary because you know uh, the structure of the European Parliament it's it's huge, but in general we have like four different main areas. So the first one, I, uh, we connected the president and the plenary uh, sessions. I will tell you why. But the first one is the president uh, of the European Parliament, who uh, represents the EP, the European Parliament, externally and overseas. And she, because it's a she at the moment, uh, it's you know uh, presenting the, right, the, uh, the plenary debates. Uh, any idea who is the current president of the European Parliament? I said it's a she. Isn't it uh, Roberta Metzola? Roberta Metzola. Th thank you very much, Jordan. Thanks. Yes, and, and she's serving for a renewable uh, two and a half year term at the moment. So uh, until, you know, uh, the next election, she will be uh, still the, the, European, the president of the EP. And I was saying plenary sessions. If we go to the one of the first uh, slides, uh, we don't need to, but uh, there were two photos. And one was the hemicycle, the plenary session in Strasbourg, and the other one was the Brussels one. So every month, uh, not in the summer, not August, the plenary sessions take place in Strasbourg, and extraordinary sessions uh, take place in Brussels. Because as you know, the European Parliament moves uh, monthly from Brussels to Strasbourg, and there are also administrative offices in Luxembourg. So uh, the plenary is chaired by the president, that's why we connected both, and uh, it's the main legislative body. So all the different legislations, finally, they get both, they get discussed and approved uh, in the plenary session. Okay, and now, uh, my apologies, because, uh, can we go back? Thank you, Maria. So this is very tiny, because this needs like a a presentation itself. We need to talk about committees and delegations, but summarizing, very important. So we said that the European Parliament has an external representation, and I go first to the delegations. So there are 39 delegations in total that are the ones that, uh, this is very tiny, but as you can see, you know, there are the names of different regions and, and countries in the world. And these are the delegations, the mandate they have, you know, is to represent the European Parliament externally, maintaining the, Europe, the international relations and also promoting the European Union values. So in, a, in overall, what they do is to contribute to enhance the European Union global role. And now, finally, to the committees, because this is what will connect with the, the core, ta, the core uh, meaning of this workshop today, we have the committees. 20 committees uh, plus three subcommittees, okay? They play a really crucial role in policy making, and they, the members of these committees, uh, all the different members of the European Parliament, they are engaged in committees and delegations. And what they do is that they prepare positions, the members of the Parliament, on the different legislative proposals, oversees the EU activities, and also organize hearings with different political bodies. So, in overall, this is what the European Parliament is about, a structure. But again, as, as uh, Fainab will explain to you, we really encourage you to dive, to go and immerse yourselves in the AEP website. This is where all the contents uh, can be found. And really, it's very explicative. So uh, over to you, Fainab. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Teresa, for your explanation. Okay, um, now we are going to move to the break in, breakout rooms. Uh, as you can see, they, are, they have been divided into three. Each one focusing on a specific committee like employment and social affairs, economic and monetary affairs, and regional development. So this means that the member you are going to analyze should be belong to one of these committees uh, you were at it, okay? But uh, before we move out to the breakout rooms, I would like to explain how the European Parliament website works uh, for finding information. So I am going to send you first the link as you can follow my instruction. Um, please confirm if all of you are there. You can access. Okay. Uh, Maria, if you can, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, the first step is, of course, to go to the European Parliament website, and then you have to click on MEPS, members of the European Parliament. You can see it in the red circle. Okay, then, uh, Maria, if you can, okay. Once there, uh, in that section, you have to click on shirts. Are you all follow following me? 
Okay. Um, the third step, Maria, if you can click, please. Uh, once clicking shirts, a new tab will appear. So you have to click on show list without needing to change any other option. Okay. Then uh, in this case, uh, okay, clicking show list will open that uh, advanced search. So here you can perform a more detailed search. Then in this case, Maria, if you can, okay, thank you. Uh, we will focus on three countries, Spain, Belgium, and Greece, as they are the main countries that we are working with in this project. After selecting the countries, uh, we have to go to all bodies. You have to select uh, that part and choose committees. That is very important because we are going to work in this area. Then you have to select all parliamentary committees and choose the committee where you want to conduct the search. Okay, any doubt? Okay, we can continue. Once the committee is selected, you will see a list of uh, members of the European Parliament. So you can choose the one you want to start to analyze with. And clicking on their profile, you will see a section called main parliamentaria activities. You can see it? This is the section that uh, we are interested in. So within uh, main parliamentary activities, look for contribution related to contribution to parla parliamentary par plenary debates and report a shadow. Can you see it? Rapporteur, can you see it? Okay. So uh, these are the instructions. Do you have any doubt? After selecting your members and uh, reviewing their contribution regarding these matters, uh, you can add them to an open list that I, that I am going to share with you in this chat so we can discuss all uh, the members that you have selected in the final conclusion. So I am going to create the rooms. Uh, Jordan, it is possible to choose breakout rooms. No, I am going to, to organize them now. Uh, give me just one second. Okay. Um, okay. Daimim, sorry for interrupting you. Um, sure. I just wanted to say that there's a question in the chat. Okay, I will says, give me just um, ah, yes, one second. I am trying to. Um... Okay, and the last one. Okay, the question is could you please repeat the basis of your. Okay, uh, Paloma, the only thing I am going to share with you uh, the document. So you have to look for a member and try to look for some contribution that they have uh, developed during uh, the parliament. Is that my question? Okay, I can. I... Okay, are you all in your rooms? Uh, Fainer, excuse me, I'm... I, I am trying to... Um... Yeah, yeah, just, just uh, I think, re replying to Paloma's question. Uh, yes, definitely, uh, it's about, you know, uh, different contributions on the field of uh, economic uh, economic entrepreneurship. Okay, so different contributions, no, Fainer? That the... Yes. MPs have done in the area of uh, entrepreneurship and hey, employment um, policies. So, um, can you join the rooms? Okay.
Okay, I think that we are all here. Uh, hello, Feinab. Hello, Teresa. Uh, I have added you in other group. Uh, okay, where should I go then? You have to go to the second one, but uh, yes. Can you move me? Yeah, sure. Lovely. Uh, just one thing. Um, what about the Excel document, sign up? I'm going to share it with each group, uh, but okay. um, the problem is okay. that I cannot see you, Teresa, in the... Um, How come? I cannot see you in the in the groups. Why not? Okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. What what room do you want me to go to? Room two? Yes, go room two. Yeah. And I'm going to one and Olga, you have to go to the third one. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Sure. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay, um, if you want, I can give you like five, 10 minutes. You can start your research and then we can go back and share uh, all the information that we have found. Okay? Okay. 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 Marcos, Olga, okay, Olga. Okay, guys, if you need any help. Okay. Hi Marcos, can you come? Uh, can you enter to the main room? Do the room one.
I will try. And, and regarding the main parliamentary activities that he has been doing, there was a kind of an interesting discussion in the, I think the uh, regional person Okay, guys, we can start with your research. If you can open your camera so I can see you. Robert, Margarita, Monica. Robert, Marcos. I can hear you if you please can turn on your... Uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Okay. Did you find something in a member that attract your attention? Yeah, I did. Uh, I found uh, Sarah met you. Okay, yeah. give me just a second because I am going to share with you this document so we can write there. And uh, uh, what can I? Well, I don't know what I cannot share the screen with you. Okay, now, can you see it, please? Just confirm if it is possible. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, tell me about the members, about the things that attract your attention, and about uh, the contribution that they made. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the, the, I mean, one, uh, one contribution uh, took my attention, and it was about the living costs in Europe. As she was talking about uh, about uh, tickets to public transport and so on, so that was quite quite interesting. As Can she you share please uh, with me in your uh, in the chat, please? So uh, I... this the site or what would you mean? Then the name of the uh, member of the European Parliament. Oh, sure, sure thing. Just a then... second. Here you go. Sarah Matthew, yes, okay. Where is from? Uh, she's from Belgium. Okay. So keep going. Okay, so there was this one, uh, one contribution, where she where she was talking about, uh, as I said, about the uh, the cost of public transport and uh, also about the uh, the uh, health insurance and so on. So. She was talking about like it is uh, it is uh, it's too expensive for for various people in the European Union and uh, also yeah 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 and yeah, also yeah. About, about going to holidays and so on and as she want to fight against poverty and social exclusion social exclusion uh, and what's Okay. Yeah. That, and something yeah. related uh, about entrepreneur, young entrepreneurship. Oh no, I didn't find anything about that. I'm sorry. Because so I will, you I... have to look for some so for some member that work in that area, that inter entrepreneurship that I have contributed in that in that okay. one. Okay. Uh, okay sure. Margarita, Monica, do you have any other member? If you want, I can give you like other five minutes if you want to, to make a deep research. Okay, I have to analyze this. Uh... Yes, please. <laughs> okay, me, okay, if you want, I can more. give you just five, uh, another five minutes. Okay, okay.
If you want, guys, I can share with you the document and you can write there. So, here is it in the chat. Okay, so you can just enter and please just try to use just one or two so we can choose to them in the final. I think that one is missing. Margarita, are you with us? Okay. Sorry for interrupting you. I'm just no going worries. to give all of you uh, a link because I think that there are some... Uh, Sainet, just letting you know, we have uh, the Excel document open. We are not having any issues at all. Ah, okay. Sorry, I thought that you have. No Thank worries. You. No worries. You are most welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I think that uh, someone has already taken our... Okay, guys, I'm here again. Report employment. Who put Lina Galvez? Me. Why? Uh, because I found it interesting because also she's working in the committee uh, for women and she did uh, a lot of reports, for example, report on women's poverty in Europe, but also uh, regarding the economic uh, area, she's uh, contributing, well, she contributed to the report on employment and social policy in 2021 and also on the European semester, that is really important for the European Union. So for that reason, I chose her. Oh, that's very good. Thank you. She's Spanish, right? She's Spanish, yeah, from PSOE, that's it. Where are you from, Monica? Uh, Spain. Spain. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, Robert, Marcos, I think that <laughs> we have less people than, I don't know if they leave the, uh, the meeting. Robert, Marcos. Yeah, I'm still here. Yes, sir. Okay, do you have time? We can share if you want. We can. I can share uh, the screen for all. We can find a member all together. So, I have one member. Do you have one? Mm. Okay, you can tell me. Yeah, I can, I can share it, but I don't have the. As I told you, I don't have the the computer here, so I can write it. But uh, my MEP is uh, Alicia Oms. Ali Alicia. From. Uh, OMS, H-O-M-S, yes. from uh, PSOE, also from the Socialist uh, of Spain. Huh? Yeah, I know here because uh, I talk something about her and in some Spanish TV debates. And uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, I, it, it reminds me something about her work in the European Parliament regarding the, the, um, and the social and economic entrepreneurship and the uh, fight against poverty. Oh, that's... And social inclusion. Okay, I will add it to you. Can you repeat me, please, the, 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 the name? Alicia? The name? Alicia Oms. H-O-M-S. Hmm. Okay. But did you find it in... Okay. I'll add it. Oms. Okay, uh, Robert, do you have another one? No, I still don't. I, I was trying to find something uh, connected to to the one I uh, yeah. I took to, to the summit you, but I couldn't find anything. It will be also interesting to look for some other members from different countries like Greece or Belgium because <laughs> I I have seen that we have all of them there are Spanish. Lina Galvez, Alicia Holmes. Uh, I am here. Can I? Can I share it with you if you want? Um, okay. Yeah, sure. Please tell me if you can see my screen because sometimes. Yes, I do. 
if you want, we can share a little bit about this this member. Um, yeah, sure. From Greece. Contribution. Uh, we have it here. Or parliamentarian. Okay, like uh, observation in Gaza, risk of the deal, a single application, implementation of a report. Okay, we can see that maybe this one doesn't work so close with the matter that we want. So we can go to the second one. This one agrees. Okay. Uh, here. Okay, what about this one? Working condition of teacher in the EU debate. We can take a look. Yeah. Also, this one, you try to assist young people facing the house in a close living crisis. Uh, maybe this one can be a good one. Okay, it's in Greek, but we can translate it. Okay, you are in this. Yeah, same it's all in Greek. Huh? Uh, nothing. That just that uh, that it is all in Greek. Yeah. I I tried to translate it, but I don't know why I cannot. Yeah, maybe for Google Translate. Huh? Here it doesn't work. I don't know why. Okay, I can just translate it in a second. You can see my whole screen. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Um. Just a moment. If you have another uh, member, you can also just write it in the paper, in the document. Okay, here is the translation. You can see it? Yeah. Okay. So this is a statement, more than a report. Okay, maybe it's not related with... Hmm. Okay, do you think that we can use this statement for something related to entrepreneurship? I'm not sure to be honest because not, here, not he, really, yeah. Not yeah, really. he's he's talking more more about, he's talking the, more about the, yes, about the possibilities and things that yeah. we can have there. Yeah. Okay, uh we can maybe try Belgium. Uh here, once again, search, advanced search, countries, Belgium, committees, and we are in employment and social affairs. Okay. Have you ever, well, Sarah Matthew? Yes, you have to look for that one. Uh, did you research something about Mark or Cindy, Robert, in your case? Because no, I know that you were no, uh, I look just for the same issues, but uh, now I'm looking into into the smart bozenga. Oh, okay, okay. So we can go here contributions. Hmm. They don't have uh, these ones. The preventive or uh, the preventive work related deaths or mm -hmm. Robert, I can yeah, hear yeah, you. Yeah. I can hear you very well. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, now can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, uh there is another comment that you want uh, to share because here we have Alicia Holmes, Lina Galvez, Sarah Matthew. Well we have choose these three ones. No, why or why? Well, yes, why? I don't know why. Monica, Roberta, Marcos. Okay, you know that we now we have to do I... a, like a final conclusions, and that's why I'm asking you just to. For example, I choose like uh, Lina Galvez because uh, she's working uh, for uh, things related to the European semester, and that is a uh, base, uh, as I said for the coordination of the poli political, economic, and social policies. 
and that's okay. it. That was my my main motivation to choose her. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, I chose her be uh, because of the of the first statement I told you about. Uh, because of because of she was talking about the fighting the poverty and the the cost of living in Europe these days, so that was kind of uh, kind of interesting for me. And what do you think that they have should focus more on youth, in us young people? Because we I'm talk, we heard talk yes, we heard talk a lot about internship, about new policy makers, but why we should be involved. At that point, why why are uh, us young people should be involved? Yes, like Be young people, young people especially because we are talking about young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think because they can bring new visions visions into into the EP. You know, there are there there is many of uh, old people. Uh, they were they were taught in old days. And uh, now the the young people could bring some new and better vision, for example. Oh, very good answer, really. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, Marcos, do you want to share with us your Yeah, feelings? completely agree, because uh, all, we have the, the opportunity to share uh, new visions and new options of uh, how we live nowadays and what the world, what the European Union that we want in the future, the following, mainly in the following five years. And uh, sorry for the wind. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mainly, what we want to do, and we want, and what we want to. Uh, I can hear you well. Um... To to uh, our to generation, okay. yes, and uh, this uh, this. Uh, <laughs> okay, I couldn't hear you very well. Maybe <laughs> yeah, because lines. of your micro, but don't worry. <laughs> I want what you want to me, but don't worry. Monica? So for me, young people, uh, it's really important to contribute uh, to European affairs in general, because like, like that we can guarantee like the union of the European member states and also because I think um, currently like there are many people that are accessing to the European institutions and for me it's really important to understand the basis of how it works the European Union and for example how um, the way that you explain about the committees or how it's working the European Parliament is really interesting if someone wants to work in the European Union to know more about this. And for example, to if someone wants to specialize in a specific policy or something, I think it's a good input. So yeah, I think many people it's working nowadays in European institutions. Um, there, there are many like young people interested on that. So yeah, that's my point of view. Okay, I have my last question. It's about this workshop. And uh, have you have you have you ever experienced um, to access into the website of the European Parliament and find information about the members of the European Parliament, or is it the first time that you are trying to do something like this? For me, it's it's uh, for the first time. It's the first time. And how was it? Uh, quite good with your how-to explanation, you know. Do you find it difficult, easy to find information? I think that it's very easy and very accessible to everyone. So very clear, very transparent. Yeah, sure, sure. It's uh, it's not something hard. OK, so if you want, we, got, we can go back to the main room. OK, sure, sure. Okay, least give just like two minutes or less to the other ones to come back. Uh, I think that Robert is 
Maybe, okay, is there? Oh. Um, Hi. Hi, Zainab. Okay. Uh, I still want some left. I think there are some. Okay. Should we discuss for findings or we have to wait for the rest? Yes, or... because I close all the rooms, but I don't know why they are not here. Okay, they are here now. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, we can so start fine. sharing our conclusions. Um, Teresa, can you share, please, uh, the Excel? Thank you. Okay, we can start with the first one. Robert, Marcos, Monica, you can share with us all your conclusions. We have talked about these three members, their main contributions. So can you share with us what we have talked? Marcos? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. We have talked about uh, three, we have found three, uh, three um, uh, MEPs. Yeah. The first one is, uh, uh, Sarah Mathieu, she's, uh, she's from Belgium. Uh, the second one is Lina Galvez. And uh, the third one is Alicia Oms. The two, these two are from Spain, from the Socialist Party. And we have uh, decided to choose this one, these uh, three, uh, these three uh, MEPs, because uh, her working, they work in the social empowerment of uh, and social affairs and looking uh, and uh, the fight against poverty, mainly for, for this uh, and uh, and uh, try to implement the new 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 uh, new politics for employment for these three three main reasons basically mainly. Thank you so much, Marcos. Thanks, Robert, Monica. Do you have something else to add? Nothing from my side. Okay, let's move to the second committee: Economic and Monetary Affairs. Can you say with us? which members of the European Parliament have you chosen and which they contribute? Uh, fine, it's just letting you know that we have already checked the three different committees. Really? Yes, we have, yeah, because, you know, we have decided to explore a little bit more and to see okay. a bit more in detail, you know, the contribution. And we have uh, used a lot of our uh, time uh, analyzing the profile, especially of this Greek uh, MP. And also we have uh, dive a little bit of also employment about Sarah Matteo, because as we can see, some MPs are in two committees many yeah, times. Yeah, they are in both. Um, yeah, yes, they are in both. Yes, yes. Okay, any other conclusion from this group? Okay, we can move to the third one, regional development. We have Christina Maestre, yes, Pascal. Please, can you share with us your conclusion, the things that you have found? Yeah, I can tell if you... Yes, you mind. go ahead. Yeah, sure. So in, in our case, uh, we divide from the three different member states to give some of the different points of view. We have one from Spain, one from Belgium, and also one from Greece. And all of them, they have kind of a different perspective. It's in the case of the, of the MVPs from Spain, we have a combination a balance kind of in, between the Socialist Party and the Conservatives as well. But in the case of the Greek MVPs, most of them are from the, from the right, which is also interesting. 
And in the case of the the Belgium, there is only one person in the committee. Hmm. So it's kind of, it's and it's only from the Christian Democrats. So in that sense, it's uh, it's kind of relevant, like the, the different numbers of MEPs according to each committee. And in the case of Christina, and uh, the report I chose is about harnessing the the talent of the of the regions because you know that there is this situation of uh, talent that goes to another member state or simply leave Europe because there are not many opportunities in their regions. And this is a topic that is of interest for, for the regions as well. In the case of uh, Pascal Arimont, it's more about the, the territorial perspective as well with the use of cohesion funds on all these elements, funding conditions. And also in the, in the case of uh, Manolis, the, the Greek MVP, it's more about the just transition fund. We, and it's kind of a balance, a different per perspective that the regional, yeah, the regional area can bring to, to the European Parliament. So yeah. Thank you. Okay, I have just one question. And how is your difficult was it for you to navigate the platform and understand how to use these advanced shares tools? For all of you. All of you. How was? Is it difficult? Um, not really. In in the case of our group, uh, there was not uh, any issues with that. The only thing is that we couldn't share a screen when we were talking, discussing about it. But it was straightforward to to find like the the committees and also the the MPPs involved in the in the area. Yeah. Okay. Any other conclusion? Okay, thank you guys. Uh, um, Paloma, please, can you share uh, with us um, the presentation? Because I want you to see just one last thing. Okay, as we are concluding our activity, thank you so much, all of you, for attending today. Uh, I want to express all my gratitude to everyone, especially to our change makers, uh, Borja, Marcos, and Diego, for attending this event and also for sharing it uh, with all your network. So uh, please, before uh, you leave, uh, do you have there? Okay, uh, I can kindly ask you, please, if you can just take just two minutes to fill out this survey. And there is another one that we are going to share you after uh, after this, that is to register for our next activity. So please take just two minutes, and then once you're done, you can leave the meeting. Everyone is in the satisfaction survey. Yes, I think I think so. And that's all. Okay. Marina, do you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to to ask about this activity, like the contacting MEPs, the workshop, the second workshop. Um, could you briefly like do a summary of what is this activity going to be? Which one? The ah, uh, the next one. Yes. Oh yes, uh, we are just uh, still preparing, but uh, what we are going to do is to analyze uh, more deeply uh, the members and how we can, uh, with the uh, um, European Parliament website, uh, to contact the members. So we can just write them by email, by phone, by everything. So the main point of this activity is how we can meet our, member, our members of the European Parliament. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, if you finish, you can just leave the meeting. Thank you. And very, very quickly, if I, know, if I can say something, because Borja has mentioned um, Cristina Maestre, and last year, Youth Proactive, we had the opportunity of having an interview with uh, Mrs. Maestre. And I, I, you, can, you have the, the link uh, of the Instagram uh, post with it. And she talked about, you know, uh, this, you know, 
people, you know, young people living in the rural areas and all the EU policies that she's been, you know, actively working to shape and change this reality. Okay. Can you share that by link, maybe? Send a link to the... Yeah, yeah, you have the link on the chat. All of you. Super, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you. If you have already finished uh, the survey and also the registration, see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your thank you. and organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you the 17th. Bye. See thank you. you. See you. See you. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Diego. Hello Mariana. Teresa, good Ali. afternoon. Good afternoon, so happy to see <laughs> familiar faces. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Last thing I heard is that Diego is working on the embassy, Zagreb, no Diego? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Zagreb. Now I am in the embassy. So okay. in, about that, uh, Teresa, I want just to say something. At uh, the embassy close at four. But ah, no, they, no, 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 uh, don't worry. We, have the, we will finish at four. That's the schedule. So, but I need a uh, leave like around... Uh, uh, 15, uh, 345. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So no worries, no worries. Okay, let's okay, start. Okay. Let's start. Uh, let's start with the practice. Okay, uh, okay, as, okay, as we are supposed to. Okay, so guys, let me share very quickly my screen. And my apologies for the mess. I have several documents open. This is me. Okay, so. Uh, something that I don't know, but I, I think, you know, it wasn't mentioned during the presentation, but you need to know this. So there are several um, several um, committees, as, as I say, 23. Okay, so we don't have the time today to be looking for members of the European Parliament in 23. Um, wait, let me open. Uy, vale. How much time do we have, Teresa? Uh, we have 30 minutes. Oh, okay, good enough. No, 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 no. We have we have the time. We have the time, and I promise you guys, I do this almost every day for hours, for several hours. So finally, uh, you get used to it. Okay, so let's go to uh, the search very quickly. I'm going to follow the steps that Sinef has given us. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is how it works when you want to look for members of the European Parliament. And something that I also find relevant, and if you don't know, guys, and just for your own sake. If you go to this map and you click, you have this as well, okay? So you find the number of the members of the parliament of your country or a different European country and the ones that belong to each political family, okay? So just, just you know, out of interest. Okay, so now, now I'm not going to click Spain. What happened? Ah, okay, all countries. I don't want Spain. I mean... <laughs> I, 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 this sounds so bad. No, no, no. But what I wanted to do is that, okay, okay, let's try with Spain. So what it's very important for us, and you have this here, is that uh, there are many, many committees, okay? You oh. see this, all political bodies, I go to the committees. This is insane. If you really need to look for, like, members of the parliament working in economics for youth people, for entrepreneurship. So what have we did, have we done? We have checked uh, the different committees and in overall, there are three committees that really, really work with youth policies devoted to entrepreneurship and economic development, okay? So employment and social affairs, economic and monetary affairs, regional development, okay? So for, for the ones, excuse me guys, for the ones more working here, for me, if I say economic and monetary affairs is ECO, employment is EMPLU, and Red Sea, it's regional development, okay? So what we propose you guys to do, we have created this Excel, okay? And we want to find uh, one, Marcos, admit. Okay, so we want to find one member of the European Parliament from one of our countries, either Belgium, Greece, or Spain, that is working in these committees. 
okay, that has created some legislation or has made some comments about, okay, guys, we need to work creating entrepreneurship policies, okay? So what I, just, I suggest we do, and I, I tell you, this is really time consuming in a good way. I, I'm not criticizing, but it, you need time to really understand how this works. So um, let's just start selecting a country if you want. Yeah. Okay, so Spain, Belgium, or Greece, because these are the three countries that the project is focused on. That's why. So, okay, I started with Spain, but if you want, Spain, Greece, or, or Belgium, you, you select, guys. I'm just here following your orders. Okay. Let's try. I didn't hear you, Olga. Oh. <clears throat> I see, I said, let's try Belgium or whatever, actually. Okay, let's try Belgium. Excellent. Okay, and let's start, which is the first committee, Employment and Social Affairs. Okay, so I go to Employment and Social Affairs. And sometimes, this is driving me crazy, yeah, really. Do you see how, I, this is happening for me, <laughs> trying to move my screen. Aha, uh -huh. this is not that much. Okay, we have three members of the European Parliament from Belgium that are in this Employment and Social Affairs Committee. Okay, so what I will do now, I will go one by one and check what they do. But because I want to save us time, I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue. And I'm going to tell you that Sarah Mathieu, uh, it's a lady that has been quite, quite, quite... Uh, active in the field of youth employment okay so i already have given you this clue but this is because i spend a lot of time doing this if not you really need to go one by one okay so and now what do we do we are here okay we we have a general overview and also very important if you want to contact the member of the european parliament the email it's always here okay always uh, and sometimes they are very active in instagram so i suggest that if you need to contact them email plus nice instagram message okay so now i'm here but still uh how do i find what this what this was uh, mp matthew is doing any clue any idea Vale. Mm -hmm. We have main parliamentary activities, and here there are different things. Everything is divided, explaining us what she is actually doing. We have contributions and we have reports. Okay, contribution is when there is a public hearing or there is like a, you know plenary session, and uh, Mrs. Mathieu is there talking to people. Okay, to, to people, no, to the members of the parliament. Okay, everything is by the way recorded live. So wherever you are in the world, you can be following from your own places. Mm -hmm the plenary sessions, okay? And then we have the reports. The report is like a thesis, more or less, okay? With legislative, uh, legislative impact that the member of the parliament has written, okay? And look at this. That's why I'm so happy that we have Sarah Mathieu because this lady is the perfect example of what we are looking for, okay? So I go first to contributions and you see that this is the latest one, uh, less than one month ago. So she's been talking about the living conditions, uh, energy, climate. As you can see, not everything is connected to work. Why? Because if we go here, we see that she is in, involved in many places, in different committees, and as a member or as a substitute. Okay? So mostly she talks about environment and employment. I go back to this. Okay? So... I would say, okay, there is interesting info. So how do I uh, look for it? So I see that there is job creation. Okay. <coughs> I will keep this here. Framework. So I, this takes a little bit of time, as you can see, especially when you want to contact a member of the European Parliament, you need to do all this work beforehand. Because you are not just messaging them, okay, we would like to meet you. No, we want to meet you because you have written this project, a report, you have done this contribution, and I'm interested in this specific uh, aspect of your work. This is how it works. Otherwise, no, nothing. 
consider that they receive hundreds of messages every day. Okay, so I would say that we can pick two of these contributions. Sometimes uh, we are we are we are lucky because this is in English, but sometimes uh, they will be in French. These contributions they will be in in Greek, in Greece, Spanish. Why? Because these are all the EU official languages, and members of the European Parliament have all the right to talk on their mother tongue. Okay, so many times. You need to use uh, ChatGPT for translation or whatever Google Translate, and because I I mean we don't I don't read Greek not not at the moment, okay. So uh, and reports, as I say, we have a very 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 uh, active member of the parliament working on the field of of young uh, young work and entrepreneurship. Okay, so I would say that. Uh, this can be a really good exercise and this can be a, a first approach to say, okay, we have this member of the European Parliament, Sarah Mathieu, uh, from Belgium, okay, working uh, in, in his, she's part of the EMPLO uh, committee and why we have selected her, because she has done this uh, interesting, insightful plenary contribution and she has written a report on job creation. Okay, and then we can go deeper. But in this first phase of how do we look for members of the European Parliament, this is how we move forward. Sorry for interrupting you. I'm just no going worries. to share with all of you uh, a link because I think that there are some... Uh, Fineb, just letting you know, we have uh, the Excel document open. We are not having any issues at all. Ah, okay. Sorry, I thought that you have... No Thank worries. You. No worries. You are most welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I think that uh, someone has already taken our MP. Okay, so we have already the committee, uh, Sara Matteo. She has been selected. But I would say... Oh my God, public. Not... <laughs> okay, I would <laughs> say that uh, here, why we have selected her, we can add a little bit of more details. So the rest of the participants in this webinar can benefit. Okay, by the way, guys, I'm very sorry, but uh, I'm the only one no, with access to this link at the moment, isn't it? Olga, do you have the link? No. <clears throat> no. Okay, no worries. So uh, let's move now with this link. And later on, uh, once this is done nicely, we will share this with you guys, okay? Okay, so uh, for Sara Matteo, we said that uh, she has written a report on job creation. Okay, so what I would do if I had to do this, I would say uh, contributions to plenary sessions include, I would say this, we don't need a short presentation. And as I say, we are very lucky because this is not always uh, in English. How do you find this as a as a process of looking for the <clears throat> the information? Twenty twenty three. Okay. So this is for Sarah Matteo. Uh, guys, can you please help me? And how how can I have the text uh, together so we can actually see this? You know what I mean, no? Yeah. Ah, okay. voila, voila. Okay. Uh, so, Diego, I don't know uh, because I, I saw you were talking to someone. Just letting you know. Yeah, sorry. No, 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 no. What is that? You are at work. You are at work. So, just letting you know that uh, someone else has already selected Sarah Matteo. Okay. But uh -huh. uh, we have included uh, why we have selected Sarah Matteo here. Okay. okay, so, and as we were saying, uh, because she's the reporter, the author of this report on job creation, by the way, I really recommend you not reading all of it if you are not uh, so keen into legislative process, but it's very insightful, the work of this MP. Okay, and she has also done some uh, contributions uh, that are connected to work and uh, job, uh, job creation for youth people. Okay, so 
I'm not go I'm now going to close this. Okay? And I'm going back here. Okay? To the beginning. So, guys, uh, we have already selected one member of the European Parliament from Belgium in this committee. Because time is limited, I would say, that, tell me how do you feel? If we move to the Committee of Economic and Monetary Affairs and we try to find a member of the European Parliament from uh, Greece or Spain, you know what I'm trying to say? That at least from the first committee, we have one MP from Belgium. From the second committee, we have one from Greece and Spain. And in the third committee, we have one more from the remaining country. How does it sound for you? Uh, Good. Yeah, Good. Ali. Ali. Uh, actually, about the, the room free, we can add the country uh, Austria. It's OK. Uh, I'm afraid no, uh, because the, the 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 project is focused only in free countries. It's you know the oh. it's how it's organized. Uh, because when we applied for the project, we had to select free countries, and we decided mm -hmm. to select a different representation of different areas. Yes, oh. yes. By the way, just letting you know, uh, I if you are interested in Austrian politics, I really would recommend you uh, checking the work of this MP. I'm always Hans Heide. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, uh, he's in the Committee of uh, Culture and Education and he has written a lot about regional development for young people. Okay. That's yes, good. and I, I really, he was very, very, very um, active in the trainerships, so all the trainees get paid properly. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> so if, if you want to check Austria, uh, definitely Hans Heide. That's a good uh, good example of uh, involvement with youth policies. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Good. Okay, so guys, um, let's um, go for the... Sorry, sorry, Olga. No, no, I would like to <clears throat> propose to choose Greece now. Yala, let's go to Greece. Okay, so economic and monetary affairs. Esperat, uh, aquí. Okay, and let's go to Greece. Let's search. So you see how I'm doing it. I'm picking the committee, then I'm picking the country. And even if you want, we can pick the political group. This is something that uh, we would have loved to do this, but there is no time. Uh, but it tells you a lot, you know, when you also pick the different political groups, because you can see the different interpretations of how youth policies are created, depending on the orientation of the political ideologies. Okay, but not today. But I really, that's why I share with you guys on the chat the different families. Okay, so Greece, let's go. Ooh. Okay, I'm not going to be biased. You pick one and let's see what happens. I would go, not, don't say the independence. You know why? Because m mostly they are not attached to any political family or maybe they have been, you know, uh, experiencing some divisions internally. So they don't create so many dossiers or reports. Or sometimes they do, but, but not bias. I don't want to be biased. Then let's go for Nic Nicolau. Uh, yes, Lefteris Nicolau. Okay. Let's see. He's from the Communist Party of Greece. No, not Communist. Okay, so let's see what happens. And he's a quite young policymaker. Okay, mm -hmm. 1985. No, no, because mm, it's quite exceptional having young policy makers. Very exceptional. Okay, so Committee on Budgets, Economic and Monetary Affairs. Okay, guys, so uh, I'm already going to open uh, Google Translate, eh? uh, really. So give me one second. Okay, and I will use uh, I will use ChatGPT for this. Okay, guys, translate from Greece Greek to English. Vale. Let's wait because I know that all the parliamentary com contributions are in Greek. Okay, so he only has contributions to plenary debates. Okay. No, no reports, this is all. Let's check quickly 
maybe the reason is that he's a non-attached member, which means that probably he belongs to the Communist Party of Greece, but the Communist Party of Greece doesn't want to belong to a pan-European political group. Okay, more, more or less to maintain their political values. This happens a lot. So let's see very quickly. Uh, guys, I'm going to go down. Eh? You, you let me know when you want me to stop. If there is any mention to creation of jobs, uh, general employment, youth entrepreneurship, okay, you let me know. I'm loading more. Children first. Mm -hmm. Guys, I think no. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about European Labour Authority mandate? I don't know what is that exactly mean. What is it? <clears throat> um, European Labour Authority. Uh, but where did you see it? Uh, at the... Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, European Labour Authority mandate. Let's see what he says. Because this is a mystery now to us. <laughs> That's true. Okay, no, no, I mean, it's it's like... Okay, chat CPT. Is here anti-worker mechanism? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, with European Labour Authority, I don't know in Spain, but um, maybe Diego and Maria, you can guys help me. Uh, in Spain, we, we talk about the pat la patronal. Mm. You know la patronal, which it's like you know the the regulatory body mm. that uh, it's you know uh, in charge of regulating the relationships between the workers and the employers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this is the case. So I don't know till what extent, but probably you know keep in mind that this policymaker he's from uh, he belongs to the Communist Party. So probably here there is more ideology that actual, you know, um, action, which is also very natural. This is also the, the place to, to talk about ideology, you know, the parliament. Uh, okay, very quickly, very quickly, intensification of work. Honestly, I don't think this connects with what we are looking for. Mm. No, no, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, SEPE labor in inspector body. Yeah, I think it's more connected with, you know, with work regulations, but not with the creation of jobs and unemployment in general. Okay, but thanks a lot, Olga, for that. Uh, I'm going back to this. So guys, I think uh, Lefteris, uh, it's a good example of a member of the European Parliament, non attached, not belonging to a political family. Okay, uh, but we need to, we need to pick a different one. <laughs> okay, so... We can try I, with uh, Dimitrios. Let's try with Dimitrios. Let's try with Dimitrios. Who also belongs to... Same. Okay, he belongs to the left. Okay, which is a big, big political family also. And he's vice, pres vice president of the European Parliament. This is something I didn't tell you guys, okay? But there are 20... If I'm not wrong, eh? maybe I'm wrong, but I think there are 27 vice, vice presidents at the European Parliament at the moment. They also have two years, Monday. Uh, sometimes vice presidents are very connected with broad topics in a way, okay? So they don't have the time to regulate, but I'm surprised, a lot of work. Okay, so let's check quickly contributions. Okay, I'm going to go down, economic policy coordinate. Aha, aha. Employment and social priorities. I'm going to keep this as a, to check. And going down. By the way, interestingly for you to know, uh, we are not going to go now into this, but there are many trade agreements. In this case, the Chile and EU trade agreement that also have different clausules inside, you know, different inside legislation that it's connected to the future of war. Okay, so if you are interested in, you know, this is more connected to the role of delegations, but I, this is a good example of, you know, how these trade agreements also, you know, include 
future of work and job creation in the in countries like Chile in this sense. Okay, so guys, I'm going down. Stop me eh? if you see something that it's relevant for us. Mm, what do you think about this? Mm. <clears throat> Let's try it. Let's check Let's it. Try. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Because I mean, housing crisis is also connected to, you know, employment in a way. Okay, so I'm going a little bit more down. I think we need to check the reports as well. Okay, I'm going to check the reports, okay? Because it seems that this is from October. He's very active. Okay, report on the European Central Bank. Mm. Okay, I'm going to open this report it's not relevant to us, but I want you to see something. Imagine you have this huge report, okay? And you have no idea where to go. Sometimes, I don't know why, but most of the time, the reports have an explanatory explanation. Let me give you an example, because this is not a good example. Uh, what is this? Uh -huh. Ah, 50. Oh my God, guys, look at the time. Oh, no, no way. What happened? What happened? Okay. Okay. So very quickly, very, very quickly. Would you guys, even if we haven't go deeper with all that Mr. Papa de Moglis does, would you like us to put him in the economic and monetary affairs? Because it seems that no one has picked here an, uh, an MP. Okay. Do we have like... Universal agreement. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wait. Wait. I don't know. Oh, okay. So Dimitras Papa, and very quickly, maybe we can put here a contribution to plenary debate. Two seconds. Uh, two seconds. No. No. It's fine. It's. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys.